Hey everyone, welcome back to Ali Bakes. I'm Eliza Saw, and today I'm going to be doing three black sesame recipes in about three different levels. Apologies in advance, but there is construction next door, so if you can hear all the drills and whatever those tools are, <laughs> I'm sorry. But the show must go on, and I'm going to show you how to make these three black sesame desserts featuring black sesame soup, matcha black sesame cupcakes without buttercream, and lastly, this mochi black sesame cake by Bon Appetit, and I just wanted to try it out, so you'll see how I do it. I'll tell you all about it, and let's get started, but before we do, don't forget to like this video and subscribe if you haven't already. I do food and baking and eating related videos every single week, so let's get on with it. We're going to do some black sesame soup and this is a Chinese dessert. I got the recipe actually off of this wonderful link. Super easy. All we're going to do is take some water, rice flour and glutinous rice flour, sugar and black sesame. <clears throat> Break it down. <laughs> so I'm sort of cheating. I don't have the whole sesame seed. I actually just have a packet of already ground toasted black sesame seeds. So what you're going to do if you have the whole sesame seed is just put it onto a pan and toast it and move it around until it starts to crackle a little and you can smell that it's nice and toasty. And then you're going to pop that into a food processor or a coffee grinder and just pulse it just until it's finely ground, but you don't want to go overboard because then it'll turn into a paste. Or if you're lucky and you're like me, you can go ahead and just buy a packet of already ground black sesame seeds. So we're just gonna put everything into this saucepan. Bring it over to the stove and then put it on medium heat. We're just going to whisk this gently and it will thicken up fast and that's when it's perfect. If you do go a little bit overboard, you can add a little hot water back in and mix it until it's nice and homogenous. But I found that this texture was perfect for soup took it off heat and served it warm. My parents never had this before, but they also really enjoyed it. Recipe number two, and this is going to be a matcha black sesame cupcake from my wedding cake tasting series. And this one is going to be a little different. Last time I put in a little bit of black sesame ganache right into the center of the cupcake. And then I made a black sesame buttercream to put on top. This time I was feeling like making it super simple. I didn't want to do the whole coring out the center of the cupcake because I just didn't feel like it this time. <laughs> so instead of putting the ganache inside, I decided I would put it on the top as a little like frosting and that way you don't really have to make buttercream. So this is a super quick and easy recipe. For the matcha cake base, you are going to need some flour, sugar, baking powder, and salt matcha powder, one egg, milk, oil, and vanilla extract. I actually didn't have canola oil, so I'm going to be using some coconut oil, but you could use any type of oil that you have on hand. And then to put it together, we're just going to whisk together the flour, sugar, baking powder, matcha, and salt. If you find that your matcha is super clumpy, you can sift it. Today, I was just going for it. I didn't sift anything. <laughs> Oh, just me exposing myself for being sort of lazy. <laughs> um, okay. Then we're going to add the wet ingredients. So the milk, oil, vanilla extract, and eggs. Please note that if your eggs are cold and your milk is cold, when you add in your coconut oil or melted butter, it will start to solidify. So whisk it all together really quickly until it is just combined and then take a spatula and just make sure there's no dry bits left at the bottom of the bowl. And then we're going to take an ice cream scooper, a large ice cream scoop. By the way, I do get this question pretty often and it is a what kind of ice cream scoop do I use or what size. I will put it in the description box below. And I also have a couple links for other tools that I use. So if you do use those links, please note that I do get a slight bit of commission off of each of those links. And it just helps me to continue creating content like this. So yeah, thanks. <laughs> so yeah, we're just gonna scoop it into a six cavity cupcake mold. And I like to use this mold because I like to only make six cupcakes at a time so that there's not too many laying around the house. But yeah, if you wanted to do a full pan of 12, you could just double the recipe. Also, it looks like it's not enough for six, 
but I promise you if you're scraping down your bowl as much as possible then you will get six cupcakes. Also you can even it out by taking a little bit of batter from every other cavity and then putting it into the last one and that ensures a nice even amount of batter in all cupcakes. So this is just going to bake at 350 degrees Fahrenheit or 180 degrees Celsius for about 20 minutes or until a toothpick inserted into the center comes out clean but I find 20 minutes is perfect so I never really test it. I should. I really sh Don't listen to me. So once those are out of the oven and they are nice and cool, then we can put on our ganache. But yeah, so I made my ganache a little bit ahead. And what it is, is basically just white chocolate, hot, heavy cream, and black sesame powder. And so you're gonna make it by pouring the hot cream over the white chocolate. If it doesn't melt right away, then you can just pop it into the microwave for about 10 seconds at a time and stir it in between to make sure it's not too hot. Or you could put it over a water bath and stir it just until it's nice and melted. But I did the microwave method and then I added in my black sesame seeds, gave it a good stir, and then I just let it to kind of set up while the cupcakes cooled. Once everything is nice and cool and set up, then you can just dollop about two to three tablespoons of ganache. And then you can just like kind of decoratively spread it out with a spoon. So this also requires no piping bag. And when I say these recipes are super easy, they are. I tried to do the smallest amount of cleaning today. <laughs> uh, you know what? I think it's the weather. Whenever it starts to get too gloomy, it's like past the bright side of fall and it becomes like dark and gloomy and the leaves aren't so bright anymore. It just like, I don't want to do anything. <sighs> You should comment down below where you're from and what the temperature is in your area right now because I feel like Canadian weather is just a roller coaster of emotions. Off topic. So yeah, and then you can garnish the cupcakes with a little bit of sesame seeds, optional but cute, and then eat it. So this is the third recipe and this recipe is actually one that I stumbled across on the internet, the interwebs, and it is by Bon Appetit. R.I.P. Yeah, and it is a mochi black sesame cake. So it sounded really good to me. I love mochi, I love black sesame, and I decided to make it. The only thing I didn't like about this was the way that it was sort of written out. There are a lot of ingredients that need to be divided, and then, I don't know, it just felt confusing to me while I was reading it. Basically what we're going to do is prep an eight inch pan by buttering the sides and putting a circle of parchment at the bottom and buttering the parchment as well. Basically you wanna set aside some plain black sesame for your sugar caramel later on. And for the cake part itself, you're gonna mix it with sugar. You're gonna use the black sesame and sugar to coat your pan and then tap out the excess and then put the rest into a bowl. So along with the black sesame seeds, the sugar, you're also going to need some glutinous rice flour and I'm using Mochico and that's actually their suggested brand. So good thing I had that on hand. But um, yeah, so you're gonna use a lot of Mochico. A little bit of salt, two eggs, some milk, some cream, and vanilla, some melted butter, and baking powder, which I later realized I forgot. <laughs> we'll get to that in a second. But basically, you're gonna pour your batter into your pan and bake it at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for about 45 to 55 minutes, which I find is a big gap, but mine took exactly 48 minutes so then we're going to take it out of the oven let it cool completely take a knife run it around the edge flip the cake over onto some parchment in a pan and then flip it again onto a cake stand i actually didn't know if i should leave it upside down or if i should just serve it right side up but i decided to flip it twice so that i could serve it right side up because you are going to cover it with a caramel anyways. So to make this caramel, you're going to need some sugar and some water. And we're just going to boil that until it becomes the color of honey. 
and on the side you've got some heavy cream some black sesame seeds and a little bit of salt so to make this caramel once you've reached that honey color we're just going to take the cream pour it in be careful it will splatter it will bubble well, if it doesn't come together right away, you can pop it back over to the stove just for a little bit to melt the caramel on the sides. But then um, the instructions say to pour the caramel right onto the cake right after and then garnish it with some sesame seeds. So that's what I did. And that is how you make this mochi black sesame cake. I cut into it. The texture is a very mochi, gummy, delicious. <laughs> And even though I forgot the baking powder, it actually, the texture is still really good. So, I mean, if you forget it, I don't think it's a big deal. I will try to make it again sometime soon with the baking powder, but I like how it turned out anyways, since I love mochi. And yeah, so let me know what you thought of these recipes. Do you like black sesame? You probably do since you clicked this video, right? But yeah, I hope you enjoyed those recipes. Let me know if there's another ingredient you would like me to do three recipes on. I actually really enjoy making these videos. And uh, yeah, if you're new to my channel, I do baking and food related and eating related and sometimes food vlogs every single week. So don't forget to like this video if you liked it, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you all next week. Bye. You can really tell I've had a coffee right before opening up my camera, but